the question is that this House has considered the motion. Shadow Secretary of State Andrew Gwynne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, this week we were reminded of some of the darkest days in human history as we commemorate the 73rd anniversary of the liberation of Bergen-Belsen. Over 120,000 Jewish people were transported to Belsen, a high proportion of which were children. One of these children was Anne Frank, the very person the Secretary of State quoted, who died with her family only weeks before liberation by British soldiers. Whilst in hiding, she wrote, how wonderful it is that no one has to wait, but can start right now to gradually change the world. How wonderful it is that everyone, great and small, can immediately help bring about justice by giving of themselves. And I hope today, Madam Deputy Speaker, that all of us in this House are able to live up to those words. I want to begin by addressing the comments made by the Secretary of State. Because as politicians, we all, and I mean all, have a duty to root out anti-Semitism. But recent events have shown that we in the Labour Party need to be better at policing our own borders. The Labour Party was formed to change society, to give a voice to the oppressed, reflecting the existing defects of society can never be enough. And it is our responsibility to show that we have zero tolerance of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. There is no place for anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, in the left of British politics, in British society at all. End of. I'll give way. So, to my honourable friend and I, completely associate myself with the last three or four sentences he said. I represent one of the uh, more significant Jewish populations in the country in Kersal and Broughton. I've worked with the CST uh, over a number of years to try and reduce the number of attacks that have been on Jewish people within the constituency. I have to say that I have never come across anti-Semitism within my Labour Party and I've been shocked to realise that there is anti-Semitism with people associated with him uh, and within the Labour Party. Does my honourable friend agree with me? One of the things we can do to reassure the Jewish community, not just in my constituency, but throughout the country, is where accusations are made, deal, by, deal with by proper process those accusations as quickly as possible and where necessary, throw the accusations out or throw the people out. My honourable friend is absolutely right and speed is of the essence. We cannot allow uh, any allegations of anti-Semitism to be uh, kept on the back burner. Where they are made, we don't just call it out, we root it out. And my honourable friend is absolutely right. If I can make a little bit more progress. Um, because to recognise this, as the Secretary of State has said, the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party adopted the International Holocaust uh, Remembrance Alliance working definition of anti-Semitism. And we've written uh, our outright opposition to anti-Semitism into our own party rules. However, I acknowledge in the light of recent events that much, much more work needs to be done and that includes, among other things, uh, the overdue full implementation of the recommendations of the Chakrabarti report, including a programme of political education to increase awareness and understanding of all forms of anti-Semitism. Hold on. No political party has the monopoly on vice or virtue but we will put our house in order. Let me be clear today. If anyone is denying the reality of anti-Semitism on the left, they are not doing so with the endorsement of the Labour Party or the leader of the Labour Party. 
prejudice and hatred of Jewish people has no place whatsoever in society and every one of us, Madam Deputy Speaker, has a responsibility to ensure that it is never allowed to fester again. So I welcome the opportunity to debate this important issue today. It is sadly long overdue. Now, I know my honourable friend, the member for Bassett Law, has sought support from the government to bring this issue to the House for a number of years. And I want to pay tribute to the work that he has done in this House over a long time. But I also want to pay tribute to the work of Rabbi Herschel Gluck and uh, of the Shomrim volunteers in London. Rarely do these men and women receive the recognition that they deserve for the commitment that they give to their communities. And I also want to pay tribute to the Community Security Trust for the work that they do to defend our synagogues and our schools and their continued work in shining a light on anti-Semitism in the United Kingdom. I will give way. Very grateful. And can I assure you that I think the House will have recognised the honest sincerity with which he is addressing this issue and will, will have taken the tone of his remarks very much to heart. But he will know that in this game of politics that we sometimes play, um, actions will speak far stronger than words. Mr Livingston remains a member of the Honourable Gentleman's Party. Mr Livingston's comments in this issue have become ever more eccentric. I know he's not the decision maker on this, but I'm sure he would take it from honourable members on both sides of the House that if the body politic is serious about this issue, his speedy expulsion is required. And of course the Honourable Gentleman knows that there is due process going on. As I've already said, that, that procedure needs to be sped up. But, you know, the, the Honourable Gentleman, and I'm not going to go down the road of politicking, and, you know, I do think that there has been a, a bit of borderline politicking coming, coming across. But of course we have, I will give way in, in, in a moment, but of course we do have issues to resolve on all sides of the House. There has been a complaint, for example, about the Conservative leader of Lancashire County Council for anti-Semitic views. We've all got a duty to call out anti-Semitism and to root out anti-Semitism, whether it's on the right or on the left. I'll give way. Let's be really clear about this. Let's be really clear about it. Ken Livingston comparing, claiming that Hitler was a Zionist, this is anti-Semitism, pure and simple, happened more than two years ago, there's been ample time to deal with it, it's a disgrace that it hasn't been dealt with, kick him out immediately. Let me say this, it should have been enough, it should have been enough when the, when the Community Security Trust, the Holocaust Educational Trust, the Jewish Labour Movement, the Jewish Leadership Council, all said it was enough. But we even had the Chief Rabbi speaking out, and still nothing's happened. It's a disgrace. He should stand at that dispatch box, and he should tell the leader of the Labour Party that Livingston must be booted out. Boot him out! The, the Honourable Gentleman makes his views very clearly. Uh, Mr Livingstone's views, I do, not, I do not share Mr Livingstone's views. I think that they are abhorrent. Um, and the Labour Party will go through the processes that are well applied to each and every member of the Labour Party. That needs to be done far more quickly, uh, but uh, it needs to be done uh, as it would to, no, as it would to every member of the of the Labour Party. I won't give way. I want to make some progress because lots of members want to speak in this debate. And as we've heard, Madam Deputy Speaker, in this year's report from CST, it was found that hate incidents have reached a record level in the UK, including a 34% increase in the number of violent anti-Semitic assaults. In last year's statistics, where it could be determined, 63% of incidents were described as being far-right in motivation, 6% were described as being Islamist in motivation, and 30% showed anti-Israel motivation. CST reported that 88 incidents targeted Jewish schools, 
school children or staff, with 50% of these incidents taking place as Jewish school children made their journeys to or from school. In one incident, fireworks were thrown at visibly Jewish people in public in November. In another, Jewish school children were hit, kicked and punched on the bus home, but were ignored by the driver when they tried to get help. The children fled the bus at the next stop, but were followed, only finding safety after they entered a kosher shop and asked for help. It is a mark of shame on our society that our Jewish schools need security guards to protect their children. And uh, on social media, as we've heard, anti-Semitism is in plain sight on the most heavily used sites. In January this year, the World Jewish Congress found a 30% increase in anti-Semitic posts since 2016 and found almost twice as many posts denying the Holocaust. But anti-Semitism doesn't only appear as swastikas, brown shirts and jackboots. It also haunts our society as coded language and dog whistle euphemisms. In the 1930s, the terms usury, uh, money power, alien and cosmopolitan were used as coded references to Jewish people. Today, Jewish people in the public eye are marked out as globalists, rootless cosmopolitans and the metropolitan London elite. It runs through conspiracy theories as Holocaust inversion, Holocaust denial in anti-Zionism and in claims of secret plots against our country that are little different than those seen in the protocols of the elders of Zion. In 2011, my right honourable friend, the member for West Bromwich East, the deputy leader of the Labour Party, spoke in this House of the disturbing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and secret plots propagated by Fox News against Holocaust survivor and businessman George Soros. These views continue to be broadcast. Only last week, the use of anti-Semitic imagery featuring Soros led to the electoral success for the uh, Fidesz party in Hungary. Thankfully, the import of these conspiracy theories into the front page of UK uh, newspapers generated the outrage that, quite frankly, they deserved. I will give way. Thank my honourable friend for giving way. I think we all know that one purpose of Holocaust denial is to undermine the moral foundations upon which the State of Israel was um, established 70 years ago. Can I tell my honourable friend, I've just spent a week in Poland participating in the March of the Living, joining survivors and young people in visiting the places where history's greatest crime was committed. When I first entered Parliament 21 years ago, I never imagined that some in my party <coughs> would suggest that this horror should somehow be a matter for debate. Would he join me in saying shame on them and shame on any who refuse to speak out against them. My honourable friend is absolutely right. The Holocaust was a dreadful chapter in our world's history. It happened. And we should never, ever forget what happened uh, during those very, very dark days. And those that deny that the Holocaust happened need calling out at every opportunity. They are wrong. They are deeply wrong and deeply hurtful views uh, that they spread have no place in a modern <coughs> democracy. And Madam Deputy Speaker, since 2016, uh, the, uh, the way that uh, we have seen uh, the debates uh, change uh, in terms of uh, the use of triple parentheses to identify individuals, uh, I think, has been used as an online dog whistle. Employed by white nationalists, neo-Nazis, anti-Semites and the followers of, uh, of those that share those views to single out targets, each of the three parentheses represents anti-Semitic claims of Jewish involvement in mass media, mass immigration and global Zionism. They even developed an app to help them to better coordinate and target individuals. Earlier this year, CST reported that online abuse 
has fallen slightly from last year, in part due to improvements in the policies adopted by social media companies and better reporting. But anyone who uses social media can see that it remains a very serious problem. I will give way. Is that my honourable friend, forgive me, he's focusing quite rightly on the dangers of anti-Semitism and the, the nefarious activities of the far right. But does he not accept that anti-Semitism is one of those areas of public debate where the far left meets the far right? And that there is a real danger if the far left continues to behave in this way of inciting further hatred and violence against one of our most vulnerable communities. Yeah. Absolutely, as I said earlier on in my contribution, uh, that uh, anybody who denies that uh, anti-Semitism doesn't exist on the left isn't living uh, in the real world. And we have a duty on the left to call it out and to root it out and to challenge it at every step of the way. And, uh, and so I do want to see the government act uh, more strenuously with social media platforms to ensure that these abhorrent views uh, are removed and removed quickly. Because as the Secretary of State has rightly said, we need to ensure that rightful critique of Israeli government policy, which is legitimate, as it is against the government of any nation state, is distinct from spreading demonization of Zionism and of the right of the existence of the state of Israel itself. That is not legitimate. I'll give way. Will he accept, however, that when people specifically target just the state of Israel, whether or not they consider the government of Israel to have acted appropriately or not, only the government of Israel, not the governments of other countries around the world who they may have similar issues with, when they target just the Israeli government, that can be, and very often is, a cover for anti-Semitism. And where it is clearly a cover for anti-Semitism, we have to call that out. Let's be clear. Uh, but criticism of the Israeli government, just like criticism of the British government, uh, is absolutely crucial uh, because that is part of our democratic processes. And those who cross this distinction, I don't think, have any role to play in the struggle to put an end to anti-Jewish oppression within the United Kingdom and they have no role to play in the process to establish peace and reconciliation in the Middle East because I won't now because I need to draw my uh, remarks to a close because this peace will only come through engagement and deep mutual recognition between the two peoples a recognition of the Palestinian struggle for freedom and human dignity dignity and of the centuries of attempts to flee forced conversion, violence and expulsion onto the Jewish people. Because Jewish oppression affects all Jews in all economic classes and the oppression of Jewish people cannot be ended without transforming social injustice as a whole. And I want to make this clear in my closing remarks. Zionism is not an insult. It's not a catchphrase, a code word for racism or imperialism, or the name for unpleasant things done by Jews. It stands for a huge range of beliefs and believers. And when we fail to recognise this, we assist those on the extremes as they use anti-Semitism to cover up the roots of injustice and shift the blame onto those who are most oppressed. On Yom HaShoah last week, Families across Britain lit candles for loved ones that were lost in one of the most evil acts in modern memory. Families remembered how almost one third of all Jewish people were targeted and murdered because of their faith. This day is a reminder that we all have a duty to ensure that such an event can never happen again. Words never seem able to capture the bureaucratic and calculated way that such a raw and hideous act was allowed to happen. Madam Deputy Speaker, we know that monsters exist in our world, but they are too few to be dangerous on their own. More dangerous are those prepared to act without asking questions. It is our job, all of us 
in this place to ensure that these questions are asked, that anti-Semitism is called out, that anti-Semitism is rooted out wherever it exists. Madam Deputy Speaker, there is no place in British society, in British politics, left or right, for anti-Semitic views. End of. Yeah. Yeah.